Hey, what's up everyone? This is David Yarden and welcome to this video tutorial on creating a comic book page. Now, this video is going to feature some artwork that I did in Origins of Marvel Comics X-Men number one. And it's specifically going to focus on the uh, Colossus story that I did in that issue. Basically, I'm going to take you from after I've been given the script from my editor and the writer and show you how I create my layouts from that, my pencils, uh, all the way to my finished inks that you see. Now, when I was first given this assignment, um, my editor said that there was a specific brief that, that, that they had. Um, basically, they wanted to have one X-Men character on each page and focus on their origin story. And they wanted a specific layout where they wanted four to five smaller panels on the page. And then one larger, splashy image of the, f the f character who is the, the focus of the story. So you can see as I'm starting my layouts, I'm actually, I actually started down the bottom there with uh, just roughing in the, the, s the rough size of the, the full figure splashy image that I wanted to have of the, the main character, since that's the focus of the page. And I'm using all the other smaller panels to work around in that. So um, even though I haven't drawn the, the character and tightened it up and have a specific idea of where I want to go with the character just yet, I did need to get an idea of the scale before I started on my other panels. Now in panel one, uh, we're actually recreating a scene from Giant Size X-Men number one, uh, which is actually the first appearance of Colossus in the, the X-Men comics. And um, this is actually the first time we get to see him using his powers. Uh, he's back on his family's farm in Russia, and a runaway tractor is coming towards his sister Ilyana, and Colossus basically uh, turns his body into organic steel, which is his, his power. And he puts himself in between um, the tractor and his sister and basically saves her. You can probably see in the top left corner there I've got um, John Size X-Men number one open. And I'm referencing the panels from there, not specifically copying from them, but referencing them to um, sort of to say faithful basically to, to what was shown there. Um, so basically I've got Colossus there with the tractor hitting him from behind and you know, I've got all the impact lines sort of focusing the attention to Colossus who's turning and looking to panel 2. So what I'm trying to do there is by him turning to look to panel 2 so I'm trying to lead the reader's uh, eye to the next panel and keep the flow of the story. And as you can see in this, this next panel, um, the writer requested for... Um, a shot of the new giant size X-Men team on their first mission on the mutant island of Krakoa uh, with Colossus prominent in the foreground and so basically what I've drawn here is you can probably see I've, I've drawn the, um, the the horizon line on a bit of an angle as well in this one again what I'm trying to do is lead the, the viewers eye into panel 3 um, so after they've looked at panel 1, panel 2 it's leaning back into panel 3 and just to keep the game, the flow of the story from panel to panel. In the panel I have um, Colossus in the foreground flanked by the, the other X-Men team that's sort of all radiating from him and all the foliage and everything sort of framing that team shot and sort of pointing in towards Colossus. So still keeping Colossus the, the focus but because I was sort of sl slanted the angle also leading the, the, the reader into the next panel as well. Now laying out panels 3 and 4, I've got those two side by side underneath on the next tier. Um, the third panel, the writer asked for uh, Colossus holding um, the body of his sister, Ilyana, who dies from the legacy virus much later on in the X-Men comics. And uh, this is a pivotal moment in uh, the, the character's um, story when his sister dies from the legacy virus and uh, the writer basically wanted me to have a shot of Colossus holding the body of his dead sister Ilyana on his knees on the ground uh, I can't remember if he specifically asked for it in shadows but um, I wanted to have it's, it's sort of a dark moment in the in the, in the characters um, the characters life so um, I wanted to have Colossus sort of alone and in shadow there and also, um, you can see I've got the lights all sort of coming from behind him, so that he's, I'm going to have his body and face in shadow, and he's sort of, 
the doorway. Uh, I'm sort of imagining there's a doorway behind him, and that's sort of creating the um, the shadows on the on sort of framing him with the shadows, and also leading the viewer's eye into the next panel and down into the main panel of panel five, and also just in the background, just having the uh, the X-Men sort of keeping their distance, but you can sort of see the silhouettes sort of slightly in the doorway. Now, panel panel four basically is after it's a scene from where Colossus has injected himself with the legacy virus and somehow absorbed it or something that ended up saving the the mutant race. And basically, the writer asked for a close-up of the arm, our Colossus's arm, and the syringe on the floor. Artrice injected himself, and you can see uh, when this actually appeared in the comic, the syringe was actually on the other side of his body, but uh, again, I'm sort of leading the viewer's eye back into panel 5, so I wanted to use his right arm on the floor instead of his left arm, so it would be pointing in towards uh, Colossus, where Colossus's head will be in panel 5. And I've also angled the syringe to point down towards uh, Colossus's head as well. So, uh, you know, on each page you want to have a focus on each page of and within each panel you want to have a focus and you want to make all the all the things in the panel work towards focusing on what's happening in the panel and you want to make all the panels work towards what's what's happening on the page the most important part of the story is what you want to focus on so now I'm starting on the uh, the main full figure character at the bottom and I don't actually have a, a clear idea of what I want to do with the character um, the script sort of left it uh, a bit open to me. Um, basically, the writer requested that he wanted to have uh, Colossus pushing on something uh, in the danger room. I think it was in the danger room anyway. But uh, basically, he just wanted a cool shot of Colossus. Um, so I'm trying to work out here. I'm not so much focused on the anatomy. When I'm drawing the, the the picture of Colossus, I'm just sort of trying to get the rough shape and work it out in my head uh, a cool pose that can show something that's not only looks cool but is clear as well because you want a clear shot of the of the character. So um, you know, I could do something really cool and do lots of foreshortening and um, make a very dynamic character, but. Uh, if I do too much for shortening, then, you know, you may just see a big fist coming at you and not much of the character's body, or... It's not really meeting the brief that I was given for this story, so, um... I'm trying to straddle the lines between, um... what I was asked to do and, um, something that looks cool. You can see I'm not quite happy with the pose. I'm trying different arms. What if I raise this arm? What if I raise that arm? I'm trying to get something that, um that's working for me but I seem to be adding more and more to this this uh, this shot but it does seem to be working I'm actually just roughing in his, his costume there it's actually the wrong costume that I'm using there and I realize later fortunately but yeah I'm quite happy with the top panels there but the bottom panel is not quite working for me So I decided to go on to uh, working out another layout here. And I want to change the pose down the bottom, but as well I want to change, see if changing the um, four other panels is going to help with the room that I've got on the page and see if I can frame it a bit differently and make it work better. As you can see here, I'm drawing the uh, panel three with Colossus on the ground and the shadows and X-Men in the background. I sort of flipped it around again to sort of, if I'd had it the other way that I had it on the first layer that I did, it would be leading the uh, the reader's eye off the page and I want to keep the viewer's attention on the page, not lead them off the page. Panel one's pretty much similar. He's, he's getting hit from behind and uh, he's sort of turning to the, well, he will be turning to the right and if, if I worked up from that layout, but you can probably see in these, these layouts that I'm doing that I want to keep Car Colossus the focus in each panel, so I don't want to make him too small in each panel. But I'm sort of running into the problem that um, all the characters are the same size, and it's not very interesting. And because 
I've made them all the same size. You're missing a lot of the background details. But if I zoom out, then I'm going to be losing the focus of Colossus. I don't want him to be so small that you can't, you know, you have to squint to try and f to work out where he is on, on the panel. And so, especially panel two, you can see where if I've got the whole X-Men team in there, I've got Colossus. If I want to keep him prominent, I'm really only going to have a, a room for a couple of characters there. So I'm not very happy with this layout. Even the arms sort of roughly, you know, sort of, that's the only sort of thing that's changing, uh, changing sizes there where it's zoomed in, but even that's sort of roughly the same size as, as the characters. But moving on to the pose down the bottom, I'll sort of flip the character around and um, I, I'm actually doing a shot where it's a, a lot more dynamic um, than the first layout that I did. I'm sort of got his extremities going, you know, his legs far apart and the arms sort of stretching out far apart. Uh, really adds a lot more dy dynamics to the character, you know, if you can push the extremities as far as possible, give him more of a superhero pose. Um, you know, he looks strong and dynamic. You can look, make a character look strong, you know, in a more of a static pose, but the dynamics of it, you know, it's, it's superheroes we're drawing here, so we want to have something really dynamic on the page and widening those the stances and the extremities uh, really creates a lot of dynamism, dynamics in the in the character. Now I'm sort of happy with that that second layout, the main character anyway, not the small panel so much, but the main character. But still, I'm trying to find if I can come up with a cooler shot of Colossus here. So um, again, I'm not really worried about anatomy. I'm just sort of roughing in roughly a rough pose that I want to create with the character. Yeah, uh, automatically. I'm not, I'm not real happy with this because I haven't even finished it and I'm moving on to the next one. Again, coming up with the layout, have this idea of him pushing up on something or pushing to the side on something. I'm thinking something huge, something big, met metallic, you know, to show off his strength. But I don't want something too big if it's going to be obscuring his hands too much or his body if I've got something in the foreground. Because again, I don't I don't want to obscure the character, um, just in case they want to use that uh, that main image later, which was sort of part of the brief where you know they could reuse the the splash image in the Marvel guide books, or if they've got a licensing out the the image or something like that, they could use the image later. If I've got all these uh, things in the foreground obscuring the character, then it sort of makes it harder to reuse the image. You see, I, I keep going back to that second uh, picture I did in the top left. Uh, but now I actually come across, I, I have another idea of what I want to do. Is uh, I like this idea of him pushing up. And I think, oh, what about if Colossus is in the danger room and fighting a sentinel and have this sort of image of him um, coming out of the uh, sentinel's mouth. So Colossus pushing up on the um, on his the top of his mouth and coming out of the the sentinel's mouth there. I actually like this um, this idea quite a lot, but the problem I'm sort of working out here is that okay, he's pushing on the sentinel's mouth and coming from the top of him, but um, to fit this into the uh, the space that I've got, I'm either going to have to crop his legs or shrink uh, the size of Colossus, which I don't want to do. I want to keep him prominent. Otherwise, the Sentinel's head's going to be going into those top three panels. So it was a cool idea, but yeah, I'm not going to use it. And you see me now. I'm, 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 I've sort of decided that I am happy with the uh, the second figure that I drew and the second the the layout in the top corner there. So I'm going to use the um, that figure there, but also the uh, the smaller panels from the first panel. I'm just blocking it in with some details and trying to see if I can uh, make that work. 